And what you do is rub it right round on the, over the legs, head and all, put it down, fold it over and put all the legs in and wrap it up very tight, as tight as you can get it. Put it in a bag and let it sit the next morning. Then, after that, you come out the next morning, till your skin or skins, whatever you're doing. Then you turn, you open them out again, and you take a, a wee piece of board, hang it all, and take the hair out of that skin. Well, what you do with that then is, you wash it. Put it in a bucket of water for, say, about half an hour, and wash it. You need to have a good one. There's some good ones knocking about. So there is. You hope you have a good one. We're in long bags, so we might as well start off with a long bag time. It went three and seven, what they call three and seven. It went... That was what they learned. That's the way we were started off to taught the drum and long bag here itself with the boys down around here. Well, you have the Bellamina time. It would go... Well, then, we, the way we were taught here at home from the way my, from my grandfather's time, it was called the Little Bagamon. And we would, we drummed it, it, it went just something the same as this here, and it goes... When you went on up the country, they drummed different again. And I, in round Vaughan Bridge, in round Drum and all, not that I'm that good at it, but they, they drummed a different time. They have what they call a fife and rattly. And it goes something, just, just like this here, it goes. The Protestant heartbeat of the Lambeg is often likened to the thunder of the cannon on the green banks of the River Boy, long ago one summer day when two kings played pitch and toss for the English crown. The story goes that it was two small birds that gave King William the warning. The wren and the robin leapt up upon the drum and wakened up King William's men before King James has come. If you want to roar defiance or deliver a battle cry, the lambeg drum would appear to be a very suitable instrument. On bright summer evenings, the throb of the lambeg across the townlands may spell out reassurance for some, and disquiet for others. It has the name of irritating Protestants and intimidating Catholics. The drummers deny this. They realize that to anybody who's uninitiated, the drumming is only a noise. That to appreciate the minute differences of pitch and color of tone, you need a refined ear and an understanding that's acquired over the years. The Catholic folk has these things, so there's what they call the Hibernians. They have drums of their own. And uh, earlier years, before the Troubles ever started, they used to follow them too. I know Protestant folk that actually bought them off them, bought Hibernian drums and still has them to the present day. These people that works at drums now, they uh, would go any length to get a good one. So it, it wouldn't matter what she is or anything like that. It, it, you don't have to be an orange man to have one of these things. Like, but most of them, most of the boys that has them, it's, well, it's all based in around Orange Halls now, the present time. really respect the neighbours. Like, you have to respect the neighbours. You know, if somebody was sick there, you wouldn't play them or... Well, I wouldn't take her out at night, you know, to waken the youngsters or anything like that. I 
have good friends, Kelly. Very, very good friends. And I, I wouldn't, it would be the last thing in my mind to insult them. The limbering up was too much for the head. A new one will have to be given the rub and fitted in time for the contest tonight. This is us coming into Market Hill on a cloudy day, better known as the last Saturday in July. Well, it is really the biggest day for the Drummond fraternity in the north of Ireland. Like, this is, this is my father here. And this is a man called John Dulligan. And they all work together. They were all drummers, yes. John wasn't so good at it, but he was a terrible, terrible good friend. And reared a very nice family. So he did. This is a, a man called Sammy Curry, a, a real good drumming man. And all his family could have drummed, and they were great drummers. County Armagh man. And we'll go along. This is my father here beside Jack Sturt. This was a great fella here. Jack Sturt come from Guildford. Now, we'll come here to this fella here that's holding this card. This is Bill Curry. That is actually Sammy Curry's brother. He was the best drummer ever lived, this fella. That we were taught to respect this man here. Yes, he was a machine. And now, this is another fella here, Walter Bell. He's actually from Castle Dawson. This, this chap here is still living yet. He was a good one, a very hard man to get, to get by. Now we're having a chap here. This is Benny Beattie. He was a good man too. I witnessed this man at the job. He was really good, Benny Beattie. That, that's me. My father used to take us very early. I was only a child then. A good drum, good full drum would be a drum with plenty of good tone in her. Her tight, you know, sharp. There's quickness in her and heavy tone, and she still holds on to that bit of weight. You would have to take good care of her and tighten her well. Tighten her well and make sure she's well tightened and everything else like. It's hard for me to describe to you. You'd need heads to suit the shell, and you need the shell to start off with. So you would. This the second head broken today. So the whole process of adjusting, tightening, pulling has to begin again. You need friends for this, men of like mind. I like a drum that would there'd be a bit of a sing in her. You know, a nice tone, a nice quick sharp tone in her. But I don't like a whole lot of weight in the drum. So I don't myself personally like. When they talk about a belly drum, there'd be too much weight on her for me. You know, she'd be too heavy toned. I don't like a heavy toned drum. I'd rather have one that's brave and quick of herself. Our drumming contest will be held on Saturday, the 4th of June, at half eight sharp. Right. Right. Where are we going? Look at All drummers welcome. Country Road in County Derry, the fraternity gathers. Enthusiasts playing for other enthusiasts. Far enough from any settlement to annoy nobody.
drummers are in their element, virtuosi of single time, double time, triple time, rolls, breaks, syncopations. There's a ring of experts around the contestants. But whatever they think, they keep their opinions to themselves. The judges make their marks, adjudicating on the quality of the drum and the skill of the drummer. The young fellas come up and kiss the girls. That's the reason the young girls like to get doing this job. <laughs> Frank Orr has won 97 prizes at contests like this. But there'll be no prize for him tonight. Another broken head. A disappointment. But as he says himself, if you knew you were going to win every time, you'd stop going. In the old days, when men were giants, lamb beggars would drum non-stop for nine hours. Only one generation ago, Frank Orr's father drummed one time for four hours. Prize here tonight on this magnificent cup. Here goes to drum number six, James McMillan. Yeah. Drumming the lamb bag is still something of a trial of strength and stamina, an occasion of emotion over reason, of energy over logic, a physical encounter that links the men to their drums and their generations. <laughs> 